This practice is some side leg work. So come on down. I really like having a blanket or a pillow for my head. You can explore that. Side lying does a few things. First, it takes the lower side down into the ground, down into gravity. This is what is grounding and supporting. That then allows this upper side to feel more of that reach, that lightness, expansiveness, because it's in relationship to space. Side lying also tells us how balanced we are, front and back, and that has to do with tone. So if we're more back, the tendency is to have more tension in the body and we want to relax it. If we're forwards, there tends to be more of a collapsing type of posture. So we find balance. And you can just take this arm, put it underneath the blanket, organize your head to your tail. This is also a place where a lot of times the head will go forward. So just head to tail, front to back, and then Side lying also brings our limbs to our midline. So it's helping us get organized, which then helps us integrate, which then helps us find more coordination. This hand can go right in the front. Let's start by taking the top leg out and flexing the foot. You could point the foot, you can point and flex the foot. I'm choosing to flex the foot so that there is a sensation coming up through the leg, up through the center of the body. So it just helps us organize a little bit more. First is lift and lower. This is very small. So that we're just lifting from the hip. You can even put your hand here and feel how that's moving. You could also put your hand here to hopefully feel how you're not moving. So a lot of times when we do side leg work, it can go into the back. The low back will do the work and we really want it in that side hip. So allowing your body to soften into the support of the ground here. So this side can get light. One more and then returning down. Next, we're gonna do circles, and I'm going to do the flexed foot again, but you can always point your foot if you like. So, we're going to circle around, and I like to say the best part of the circle is the up and the back. You can check in, put your hand on your hip. Fabulous. So we can go a little slow here so we can feel the parts of the circle that, you know, either we don't want to do. I keep wanting to go to the front, even though I know that the best part is the top and the back. And two more. Last one and your reward for doing that so beautifully is to go the other way. I know, I need to work on my reward system, up and back. It's a problem with Pilates teachers, up and back. Mm -hmm. So this is quite quiet and it's quite relaxed. Not collapsed, that's very different. Yielding is different than collapsing. Last one. And then, oh, let that leg come down. We'll bend the legs in, put your hand in front, and you can roll into that hand. Roll and then push to come up. And we can go to the other side. So we can move the blanket or you can simply just roll to the other side. We'll take a moment when we get down there to really know where we are. So, blanket under the head if you're using it. 
Your arm can be straight, your arm can be bent, and then checking in with the head to the tail. And again, one side might feel really different than the other. So take a minute. You can look at yourself, try to feel yourself. Do I feel straight? Hips are stacked, shoulders stacked. Your top arm can come in front. It can help you with a little bit of feedback and support. Bottom side is intentionally softening and moving towards the ground so that your whole upper side can feel quite light and expansive because we got to lift this leg. <laughs> we don't want it to feel like it weighs 100 pounds. So taking that leg out and it's at hip height, opening up the front of the hip and you're just going to lift and lower. So this is not a big movement at all. Just a little lift and lower. There's a reach through the leg, not a hard reach, a gentle reach. So you can feel the connection from your foot all the way through your knee to your hip. Beautiful. Let's do two more. If I'm going to be honest, I forgot to count. This kind of feels like eight. And then just lower down, take a little rest. Moving into circles, lengthening the leg out, circling around, and what's the best part of the circle? Correct, the, uh, the up and the back. Up and the back. That's usually where we don't love to go. Now this is a great place to use your hand just to check in that your back isn't doing the work. If your back was doing the work, you'd roll around. You'd end up leaning backwards. So we just keep these hips one right over the other and then reversing this. Gently reaching through the bottom of the foot, reaching back and up, back and up. And we're going to do four more. Space is helping to support this leg. And we're working. What we're not doing is over efforting and hardening our body. Last one. Oh, take a little rest. Hand goes in front. You roll your body weight into that hand and push. And this hand can help too to bring you up. Now, a nice way to get the hips moving is to either sit, you know, you can do your feet together, you could cross over, you can also do this sitting on a chair with your feet on the ground, and you're just going to take your body forward. And that's just going to give a little stretch to those hips and you can move around. And then come back up. Awesome, side leg work. It gets me every time. 